Hi guys, it's Kelsey here. Welcome back to my channel. I wanted to give you guys an update because I have a doctor's appointment today and I haven't filled you guys in in a little while. So today I am 13 weeks, three days, and I'm going in for my next like appointment with the OB, but it's also an appointment to touch base about my gestational diabetes because I failed my one hour glucose test and then I was sent to the hospital to do another test where it was a three hour test and they draw your blood four times over that period of time and I failed that one as well. So I have gestational diabetes and I have been having to monitor my um, monitor my blood sugar with a glucose meter um, where you prick your finger and you do a blood draw two hours after you eat and I'm pretty much consistently high on all of my readings. Um, I also had an appointment with a nutritionist where they, you know, just went over like what kinds of things I can eat to help lower um, my blood sugar and reduce the number. And I, I'll continue to see the nutritionist, but this is my first appointment with my OB since getting the diagnosis. And they're going to take a look at all of my blood sugar levels um, and kind of make a plan as to what's going to be happening going forward. Um, to control or monitor my diabetes. So yeah, um, it's like an exciting appointment because I might get to hear the baby's heartbeat, but also a not so exciting one because I have all this diabetes stuff going on. Um, but anyways, I am going to head on in there. I will try to video what I can and I will definitely fill you guys in after the appointment. It's gonna deadly blood here, okay? Uh -huh. Okay with that pressure is it right yeah, no, on your that's bladder? fine. Nope, that's fine. That's baby. Oh, that's it? Did you hear it? Oh yeah, I hear it. 150s, it sounds perfect. Oh my gosh. That's so cool. So I'm back home now. I got to hear the baby's heartbeat, which was really nice. And I've honestly been like waiting for that for weeks. I've just been feeling like I can't wait to hear the heartbeat just to make sure everything's going good and everything sounded good, she said. But I drove home and I filled Vanessa in on the appointment just because I needed some time to digest the news and process it and just be like a little bit emotional obviously I've got pregnancy hormones going on but also um that was not how I was expecting that appointment to go at all um so I had been taking my blood sugars and like tracking it and I showed them like my results of that and to me like I thought that it wasn't that far out of the normal range. Like I did not think that it was going to be that big of an issue. Just like continue to like monitor it with like diet and exercise. But um, that's not the case. So the doctor told me that because I was diagnosed so early, I think I did my glucose test at like 11 or 12 weeks. She said because... I was diagnosed so early, she does not believe that it's gestational diabetes. She believes that I have type 2 diabetes that went undiagnosed prior to becoming pregnant and that we've caught it because of the pregnancy. So that in itself was really like a difficult pill to swallow um, that the pregnancy isn't the reason that I have the diabetes and that my blood sugars are high. So that was upsetting for one. And then 
second thing she told me was that she wanted me to take insulin. I was thinking that we could just monitor it with diet and exercise and I wouldn't have to take insulin and I understand that insulin is like helpful, especially with diabetes and like it's a good thing, but I really didn't want to, like I've done so many injections, I'm gonna try not to get emotional, but like for years I've been stabbing myself with needles. Like do I want a diagnosis of diabetes where I have to take insulin every day and do more injections? No, like I'm just really, pretty upset with that news and I was like maybe I can try harder with the diet and exercise and she said that you know the diet and stuff is gonna it's gonna help with those numbers after I eat but my fasting levels are always high my fasting levels should be under 95 when you first wake up and you have had nothing to eat you've been fasting all through the night you should be under 95 and mine are always around 138 to 143 so always in that 140 I have never had a low fasting and she said that you know the the diet's not really going to affect that that is just the diabetes so I don't know I was really upset with that and then the next thing that she told me that was even more upsetting was that they were most likely and when I say most likely I mean that they are going to transfer my care to a high-risk doctor that basically I have to transfer care from them and the reason that I picked them was because I really liked their model of care I I switched from a midwife to an OB because I actually preferred their um they have a very holistic approach and I really I liked that about them I liked the way that they you know, want it to be in the woman's choice and how the birth goes and like really like care about the woman and like just, you know, want to put her preferences like those matter. And I just really like aligned well with their philosophy. And I was happy with my OB. And now I have to go to a high risk doctor where they're all medical focused and like, I don't know. So I was really upset with that news as well, obviously. Um, I mean, I I think everybody has a preference for how they want their birth to go. Like, no, well, I don't know. Maybe some people don't, and that's fine. And whatever preference that anyone chooses is fine. But, you know, you understand that, you know, birth is birth, and it's going to go the way it's going to go, and you don't always have 100% control over everything. But you still have some things that are like important and you just start to like create and build this like idea of like how things might go and how you might want things to go. And like now I feel like I have to completely like kind of almost let go of all of my preferences because not only did she say that I have to go and see the high risk, um, the high risk doctors at the hospital she also said that I have to have more testing, more scans, more ultrasounds. I have to have more non-stress tests. As we get farther along, they want to monitor the baby's size. And also, she said that they probably will not let you go past 39 weeks. And that right there is says induction. And I... And if some... Like... I, I'm not saying that induction is a bad thing, but it's not something that I prefer. So I wouldn't choose induction. So now to be told that I basically have to because I'm not going to be allowed to go past 39 weeks because of the diabetes, like that's just like, it was just a lot of information. So it was just a lot to take in all at once and it was not what I expected at all um I don't know I'm just scared she said that there's higher risk of me having a c-section and I mean these are just things that you don't want to hear like I I was not I didn't expect to have to do insulin I didn't expect to have to transfer to a high risk OB I didn't expect to have to most likely get induced at 39 weeks no later I didn't expect to have a higher risk of c-section and you know have have to deal 
with all this stuff, like, I really am still happy that, like, the baby is doing good. But, like, it was just a really tough appointment. And it was not, it was not the news that I was expecting today. I was not expecting a type 2 diabetes diagnosis and all of this other stuff. So, that's pretty much it. I'm waiting to hear from the high-risk doctor to schedule my consultation with them and waiting to see if they're going to start me on insulin or if I need to start it with, you know, if they're going to, if my clinic right now is going to send in a prescription and I have to start the insulin. I'm going to continue to do well with diet and exercise and see if maybe I can show them some really good numbers when I go to the high-risk um, doctors and see if that helps. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the update. Um, it's been a rough one today, but um, again, I'm I was really glad to hear his little heartbeat and know that he's doing okay. So, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I will keep you updated. Of course, you know as my appointments go on, I'll try to keep you updated on what's going on with me and how things are going. Um, so, thank you guys again so much for watching, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys. Bye.